Organizations can, can put in policies and they can have programs. When it comes down to it, it's really about their leader mm -hmm. creating an inclusive environment, making people feel valued. Hi everyone, welcome to another episode of Operator Insights. I'm Julie Roberts. And today with us, we have Richard Lewis, who is our Assistant Vice President of Culture and Inclusion here at Ensemble Health Partners. Welcome, Rich. Thank you for having me. Thanks for being here. We're gonna be talking today about a really important topic. And um, what I kinda wanna start off with is, how do you define culture, diversity, equity, and inclusion? I think I look at it in a way, let me just break all three down. That'd be great. Diversity, when I look at diversity, Sometimes people think that people are diverse, and people aren't diverse. Um, if you think of people as diverse, you might say that a, because I'm black or because you're a woman, that might be diversity, but that would just suggest that a, well, whoever the dominant group is, is the norm, mm. and that's not the case. Mm -hmm. Organizations can be diverse, communities can be diverse, churches can be diverse, and that's based on the diverse experiences of the people in those organizations, communities, and churches. Uh, so I look at diversity as just the uh, collective of different experiences that people bring to organizations, community churches, such as their fourth. Sure. Uh, when I think, um, I'll go inclusion. Okay. When I think inclusion, I believe that inclusion is really the intrinsic value placed on an employee's diverse background, those diverse experiences. Um, you can have a diverse organization that does not have inclusion, mm -hmm. which means it doesn't, it doesn't value those, those, those associates, those employees. Um, for example, um, many workplaces look at, or they acknowledge that people, some people have different religions mm -hmm. that they practice during the day. Different religions or spirituality that they practice during the day. Um, acknowledging that is acknowledging that diversity, that background, that, that's something that's different. But the inclusion would say, hey, let's give them a space so that they can pray or meditate during the day. Sure. So that's taking that step and valuing that difference. Mm -hmm. uh, when I think equity, to me, this is a huge misnomer. Some folk say equity and equality are the same. Not at all in mm -hmm. my book. I, in fact, I think they're, they're opposites. When I think equality, I think the same. Everybody gets the same, everyone's treated the same, it's exactly the same. But when I think equity, I really think differences. I think taking a person and, and regarding their differences and then treating them or making actions or valuing them based on those differences. For example, if we were, we do swag a lot here on Ensemble. We do a lot of swag. And tell us what swag. Swa oh, swag mm -hmm. is, is not, the, not our group swag, but just the, 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 the gifts that you give yes. away. Those type of things for t-shirts, stickers. Memorabilia. Yeah, gym <laughs> shoes, whatever, whatever it is you <laughs> give away, right? And so um, let's take t-shirts, for example. Um, and in, in a regular company, a group might say, hey, let's just get us a couple sizes, let's get some small, medium, large, some extra larges, uh, so that everyone gets a t-shirt. Mm -hmm. um, and doing that, the t-shirt might fit some people, right, it might fit right. Uh, others, you know, may have to make some adjustments, may need to tuck it in or cut the sleeves off, whatever you sure. need to do to make it fit. Or in some cases, some might have some physical situations where they actually can't wear a t-shirt, but the case is, that everyone got a t-shirt, mm -hmm. everyone's equal. Mm -hmm. If you were to take an equitable approach to that swag or distributing, uh, distribu distributing mm -hmm. that swag, you would say, hey, let's ask everyone what size that they want in this t-shirt. Um, and for those folks that can't wear the t-shirt or don't feel comfortable wearing a t-shirt or physically can't wear a t-shirt, let's provide them some other type of swag so they also feel part of the team. Mm -hmm. So equality versus equity. Equity is really just taking the differences and helping to go bring value, making sure they feel included with the group. 
No, I, I appreciate you kind of breaking that down because I think oftentimes things are all lumped together, yeah. right, yes. in, in that topic. And so I think that's really helpful to our audience to know how we define it and how we see the program uh, that you facilitate on a day-to-day -day basis. So, okay. quick, Another quick thing, another quick way to just look at it is uh, in terms of a meeting. Mm -hmm. And so I think of diversity as who's included, who got invited to the meeting. Yes, at the table. Uh, who's at the mm -hmm. table, exactly. Equity is the um, who's trying to get in and can't get in. Mm -hmm. Who's trying to get in and can't. And inclusion is has everyone's views been heard and acknowledged, mm -hmm. considered. Right. So okay. DEI. No, that's helpful. Meeting. Let's you talk let's let's zone in on inclusion just sure, for a minute. Sure, there sure. is a lot of buzz about inclusive leadership. Lots of buzz. Lots of buzz. So talk to us a little bit about um, you know what's happening in that space, what's important for organizations to kind of look at with a different mm -hmm. lens. Gotcha. Inclusive leadership is really what I consider the core of DEI. Um, I was reading the other day that um, employees, when it comes to feeling valued, 70% mm -hmm. of that feeling comes from what they see and hear from their leaders. Seven, I can't remember which article it was, but 70% of their value base right. is based on what their leaders do and or say. So organizations can, can put in policies and they can have programs when it comes down to it, it's really about their leader mm -hmm. creating an inclusive environment, making people feel valued. And so when you talk about inclusive leadership, it's about <clears throat> leaders taking ownership of that dynamic and saying, hey, I'm going to help create, I'm going to help use these programs and these policies so that my associates feel valued. And the, the benefit, of course, of being feeling valued, of employees feeling valued, is that you're going to reap the benefits of that experience, those different experiences, that diverse experience in decision making, mm -hmm. in, in, in thought, uh, when it comes to um, understanding concerns and being able to create solutions around those things, having different perspectives is what really gives you that competitive advantage. Mm -hmm. So Yeah, and taking advantage of all of your team members, right? Absolutely. So what are some tips and tricks that you would suggest mm -hmm. for leaders to um, engage themselves in or push them forward in that idea to make sure that they are leveraging their entire team? Gotcha. A uh, couple things. The first thing I would absolutely say is, just try to identify your biases. Mm. Try to That's identify tough. your bias. It's really because a lot of them are unconscious, right? right? And we all have biases. I mean, you just so either you don't know you have them, but you have them. There, <laughs> there are, um, bi there's lots of biases out there. But identifying those biases that you might have, or some might call them stereotypes, that mm -hmm. may be an easier way to understand that. Um, growing up, so you might have grown up with a very caring and nurturing mother. Mm -hmm. um, but she may not have been very business savvy or that wasn't her, her thing. She didn't want to get into that. And so you might unconsciously say, hey, when I encounter a woman in, the, in, in business, that she might be very caring, but she's not competent when it comes to other things. Mm -hmm. And that can affect your thinking when it comes to hiring, promoting, evaluating, all those things. So, but if you're, if you're conscious of it, mm -hmm. you're like, hold on, let me, let me think back. I see a woman, I'm working with a woman. Let me evaluate, let me hire on a way that I'm going to take my bias and put it aside and just look at her for who she actually is, not for what I think she is, not for an experience that I had before, because it also happens with people you don't like, right? Mm -hmm. um, yes. This person happens to remind me of that person. Exactly. It's like, oh. <laughs> <laughs> yes, absolutely. I think for me personally, one of the things that I've challenged myself to do is to ensure that I'm using more inclusive. I, I tend to say you guys, mm -hmm. yeah. right? It just is natural to me, but you know, I recognize probably uh, over COVID, you know, mm -hmm. when you stare at those little, you boxes, know, little boxes those, boxes, those little Zoom boxes, the Brady Bunch squares, I was like, I'm not being very inclusive with mm -hmm. that statement, not by choice, yeah. right? Yeah. But recognizing it, I think is something that to your point, recognizing the bias and making a conscious decision yes. and effort. Yes, and it's those little things. And generally it's those little things. If you think of 
um, in a meeting, many times folks will allow the most dominant speaker, the person with the most experience, to, to say and dominate a meeting. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> Sometimes leaders allow that as well. Hey, they open the floor and then that person starts going. They so walk right this, is, in. this is my idea, this is what I think, this is what I feel, and maybe new team members or members that aren't um, as forthcoming or feel as confident in that, mm -hmm. they might just sit back and just listen. They may have a great idea. They may have something to share, but they don't because they feel intimidated or they don't feel they have enough experience or they haven't been with the company long enough. Mm -hmm. uh, from a leadership standpoint, um, a leader could create some meeting rules which might say, hey, let's, we're gonna do a quick round robin after every major discussion that we have. Uh, and that may not even have to be there live. It could uh, take place as a quick email post the meeting or mm -hmm. a quick survey, just so that we're getting everyone's uh, ideas, including everyone in this decision. Uh, again, that's creating that value. I value what you think. Mm -hmm. I value what you did in your other company, or even saying that, hey, you're new to Ensemble. Have you seen this done a different way? Have you have any experience? Have you seen, we do it all the time for orientation things. Hey, at your last company or someplace else, what did they do in orientation that you, that you enjoyed or, sure. or that made you feel a certain way? Mm -hmm. So just asking sometimes. No, that's a, that's a great tip. What about, you know, we all have those folks on our team that uh, some are more vocal, some yes. sit back, they're more reserved, Absolutely. right? What, what do you do to pull those folks forward in conversation, aside from mm -hmm. making the space, right, and inquiring? Yeah. Is there anything else that leaders can do to make sure that they're listening to their entire team? Yeah, absolutely. Um, one of the things that I love to do, I create one-on-one -on -one meetings. Mm -hmm. And my one-on-one -on -one meetings, especially the initial ones, are not about business at all. I just need to know you. I want to get to know you. Mm -hmm. And more so, I also want you to get to know me. Uh, there are lots of times where the first real interaction between a leader and, and an employee or a team member might be that quote unquote, that corrective action time. Sure. Uh, I, you know, I'm too busy. I'm working on these other things. I've got, I've got a large team. I, I, I can't make the time uh, to talk to everyone. But then when it comes time, when there's something that went wrong, that's the first real interaction. Mm -hmm. And you don't want that to be, you want to create a relationship with folk and you have to make the time to create that. And so in my one-on-ones, it's really about, hey, let me get to know you. Mm -hmm. I'm, not talk I'm not talking about business. What do you do? How do you do it? Let's identify um, some of your similarities because if we can come up with some common ground, mm -hmm. that's gonna make it easier for us to chit chat, right? right? For us to talk. And then once I create that level of relationship, I have some type of rapport, even if my next conversation with you is a corrective action piece, it's gonna truly feel like corrective action. Hey, you're veering off the path, mm -hmm. let me get you back on the path, as opposed to feeling like a write up, right. which is totally a totally different feel, right? Mm -hmm. um, so for me, it's really, if you can create that relationship upfront as soon as that new team member comes and then create them a, a pathway into being accepted into the group. Mm -hmm. Helping that person, introducing, and then maybe partnering that new employee or that current employee with someone else on the team, maybe a dominant person, mm -hmm. so that sometimes I've got that meek deal, but I'm working with someone who's dominant. I can talk to the dominant person and the dominant person brings my ideas forward mm -hmm. as well. No, that's great advice. I think that um, you've given a lot of good tips, but are there any formal like resources that mm -hmm. you would suggest if, if there is a leader, a new, a new leader, right, to, yeah. the, to the space, healthcare or not, our audience is full of folks that don't mm -hmm. know much about healthcare revenue cycle, but what are some resources that you would advise to check out or read? There is an article by, oh, and I, got, I forget the name of it, but it's by Burson by Deloitte. Okay. Deloitte, not Deloitte, Deloitte. <laughs> Burson by Deloitte. And it, it's, it talks about inclusive leadership. If you just Google inclusive leadership, uh, Burson by Deloitte, you'll find that article. In that article, they talk about six characteristics mm. of an inclusive leader. Mm -hmm. And it is a powerful 
powerful piece. It's a, it's a, it's a longer read. I'm not a book guy generally. Yeah. I'm more of an article guy. Mm -hmm. But this is a great article. Uh, it breaks it out. Lots of graphics. I love Oh, that's pictures. always helpful. Yeah. Yes. <laughs> um, but yeah, I would definitely suggest that. So here at Ensemble, you oversee the um, diversity and inclusion program. Mm -hmm. If we have someone in the audience that is looking around in their organization and is hearing this message and wants to start a program yes. that would focus on this very important work, it could be daunting. Absolutely. Absolutely. Where would you, what would you advise that they do to start? To start, I would definitely start with myself. Mm -hmm. I would again, talk about my biases. I would work with folks in my organization. Generally, HR is the place that you want to go. But the first place I would go is my leader. Mm -hmm. My leader, I would say, hey, I'm interested. Here's some things that I'm noticing. Here's some things that I want to change. Here's the ways that I think we can improve our situation. Again, it starts really at the local levels. Mm -hmm. If you start working in your team and work your way out, it's going to have this grassroot effect mm -hmm. as opposed to trying to start big and push it down, sure. right? Um, so I would definitely suggest, hey, figure out what you want to do. Is there something that you're concerned about? Is there something that really moves you? Um, see what you can do about that individually first. Take it to the next step of working with your leader and your team mm -hmm. and then move from there. Mm -hmm. That's good advice for them. What would you do if, um, if you have, if, if maybe a leader is experiencing some situations that, you know, they want to include others and they've, they've, they're trying and, um, you know, it's really maybe just not taking off. Yes, yes. Um, what, what would you suggest that they, from a getting over barriers perspective that, that they do? Gotcha. I've noticed that sometimes we as leaders, we might have, for lack of a better, we may have a reputation. Mm -hmm. And bringing someone else in yes. to help facilitate that conversation to, or in some cases, to even try to get a better understanding of what the team is feeling or what the individuals on the team are feeling or if there are people that are feeling marginalized, mm -hmm. having a conversation with them directly about that. And sometimes bringing someone else in, it doesn't necessarily have to be someone outside the organization. It could be someone who's respected mm -hmm. within the organization. It could be someone that that particular team or those particular team members uh, respect having them come in, have the conversation mm -hmm. to identify what those challenges are, and then you can go back and start to plan. If you have a, someone in that space of DEI, or if you have a, another leader, you can sit down and kind of plan a uh, course of action of what we can do to help get past that and to become more inclusive and get that group maybe a little more comfortable voicing those concerns and coming to the table. And you gotta be open to what right. they're saying, right? Right. And to wanna to take action. Exactly. So that's important as well. Okay. So we're gonna switch gears. You've told sure. us a lot today about diversity, equity, inclusion, which is really great. But I wanna um, talk about Rich Lewis and how he got into this okay. work. My favorite topic. Yeah, so yeah, tell absolutely. us how you got into this work and specific in revenue cycle with that focus. Revenue cycle, oh wow. Um, this isn't my back, I didn't go to school for this. This isn't something that I grew up saying, oh, when I become an adult, I wanna be a <laughs> diversity and inclusion. Nah, it wasn't my thing. Um, so I started with Ensemble and, and my background is really in education and learning and, and, and development. And so over my career, one of the things I've always been drawn to just development and creating relationships to help people develop. Mm -hmm. um, again, it's if I can relate to you and I can help you, you you'll feel more comfortable with me helping you. And during that time, I'm still learning. Right. So it was, it was just a win-win for me. But here at Ensemble, we had an opportunity to, to create a, a council mm -hmm. around for diversity. And I, it was just something that I was passionate about. I didn't even know I was passionate about it until I really heard what it was about. So a lot of the things um, that the team was talking about, there were things that I personally related to. And I was like, man, I felt convicted. I was mm -hmm. like, well, I, how can I help? Right. How can I help? And that led to, hey, can you lead this? And hey, can now can you work on this? And then it's the passion just kept growing. The fire just got hotter and hotter. And uh, I had an opportunity at uh, one point to actually lead it for the organization. Mm -hmm. And man, I, I was just thankful for the opportunity. Um, 
once I got in, I, I started a certification uh, about it, about DEI, and realized I didn't know anything. <laughs> <laughs> That's where all the great learning acting. starts. Exactly. <laughs> I was like, oh my gosh. And, and, and so I took this, this um, certification course and I learned so much. A lot of the things I was passionate about, mm -hmm. I realized that there are, there are proven methods, there, there are studies, there are lots of data that can, that can help us improve. Um, I had the passion, but now I'm starting to learn some of the techniques mm -hmm. that go along with it. I'm starting to, and it's a very robust community. This is one of those spaces where, kind of like what we're doing with, with this piece, we don't mind sharing. Mm -mm. We don't mind sharing. And in that community, everyone wants, to, wants everyone, every community, every organization to be diverse, to be equitable, and to be inclusive. Right. And so they don't mind sharing mm -hmm. their ideas. And so for me, this is like the ultimate community. Right. I'm excited about it. I'm excited about the opportunity I was <laughs> offered here uh, to do that. But yeah, that's, I lucked up. You do I an amazing. Up. You do an amazing job here. I think when I think of you, and we've known each other for a while, mm -hmm. you are a lifelong learner. You love to share information and ideas, mm -hmm. which is why I think you're the perfect person to be able to continue to bring this topic to light and and continue to develop it in terms of just having an ambassador type program so it's almost like you read my dating profile <laughs> well that's good <laughs> all right so one last question yes all right i'm gonna i'm gonna pick up your the question that you, that we pulled from a random um oh okay uh oh yeah uh oh this is like fishbowl ensemble loves our fishbowl <laughs> you gotta love a fishbowl <laughs> you never know what you're gonna get right like like a box of chocolates so if um, you could tell your 18 year old self anything. Oh, wow. What would that be? Okay, my 18 year old self. Mm -hmm. uh, let's see. There are a number of things that I'd probably tell my 18 year old <laughs> self. Um, safe for work, please. Okay, safe for work. <laughs> First thing I would tell him is to create um, the sarcasm font. Mm -hmm. Create that. Mm -hmm. We need that in life. <laughs> um, I would tell my 18 year old self to continue learning, mm -hmm. continue learning. Never think that you can't learn something from someone. Uh, on a regular basis, I learn things from my kids. I learn things from my neighbors, yes. from the folks at church, and definitely the people at work. If it wasn't for that attitude, and at one point I didn't have that attitude, but if it wasn't for me getting back into that attitude, I definitely wouldn't be where I am today. I definitely wouldn't have been able to help people along the way. Um, but I would tell my 18 year old self and any other 18 year old selves out there, sure. but yeah, continue to nurture and, and, and this feed that desire to learn. It's mm -hmm. always much more to learn. Absolutely. Well, thanks Rich for joining us today. We appreciate you bringing this really important topic to thanks us and me. sharing your knowledge with us. Anytime, every Thank time. You. <laughs> Be on the lookout for more Operator Insights.